G'day, I'm Ash. I hope you're all doing fantastically well today. I, uh, well, we're going to be playing Matilda. Now, I don't really have an excuse for why there hasn't been videos in the last couple of days, but I could say that I've been extremely tired and I've been recuperating a little bit. It's been incredibly hectic around my house as preparation for Christmas, uh, I guess, happens this year. You know, 2020 has been one hell of a year, and you can probably understand where I'm coming from in that regard. I've been pulling 9 to 10 hour, even 15 hour days all week long, uh, just working on back end stuff and also trying to find work, which is, again, troublesome time around Christmas. Even though most companies are hiring, you know, it's the end of the year, so I don't know. Anyway, we're driving out the Matilda Hedgehog, and I love this little thing, but it's not exactly the most useful vehicle in War Thunder. And if you don't know, this is a premium gift tank at a battle rating 2.7, and it was introduced in Update New Power as part of the Battle Pass Season 1. It's got a crew of four people, uh, some regular armor, 75, 70, 55, and that's the same for the turret as it is for the hull. Engine power is 190 horsepower, although, you know, speed backwards is only four kilometers. So essentially it is a standard stock Matilda. However, the commander's hatch has been lowered a bit. And we get a lucky shot off at a Ziz 6 or Ziz 2, I can't remember. But we spotted another little sneaky tank. We're gonna let the Sherman go first. All right, he's donked his shell. All right, here we go. Let's let's see if we can put one in. Got a critical hit. Pull back, wait for the reload. Angle just a little more and straight through the center. That's our first kill of the match. Now, I guess the uniqueness comes from this vehicle is the fact that it has its own artillery system. But its range, or effective range, is only 200 meters, so you have to range find everything you have to basically kill. Which is really annoying. But the dis dispersion on the shells, are, because they're mortars as well, is not exactly great. So the likelihood that you're going to actually, you know, fire or actually hit something is incredibly low. And while I have seen people who have got kills in this thing, with the launcher, I don't think it's necessarily that useful as people tend to, to be. It's really hard to control due to the fact that you have to use your forward momentum and also, you know, angle the hull because there is no traverse other than up and down with the actual launcher system itself. It, it, it's quite a funky vehicle, I must say. And whether its use is useful to you is up to subject to a debate. The battle pass itself is not exactly a welcome change, although it isn't exactly as bad as everybody makes it out to be either. I don't like the fact that they've increased the price to skip per stage, but that's okay. You know, things happen. At least they've kept at the base price, and at least they've, you know, stayed true to what they, you know, they said at least initially. So regardless of what you think on that subject, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter. The battle pass isn't for me. I don't play games that have battle passes in them. War Thunder and Cuisine Royale are the only two games that I play that have a battle pass system in it. I refuse to play games that have battle pass systems, and I just detest them. Anyway, this Panzer IV here has got lucky because I've just knocked out his barrel. I was probably going to die there, knowing my luck. I'm coming around this corner trying to trying to nail him, so we managed to get a critical hit on the fire on the back of the deck of his vehicle. He'll be preoccupied with fighting that when I get shot in the, in the rear. We'll leave him there for a second. We need to go take out this martyr uh, and fire. We've got a critical hit. Kill assist. There we go. Fantastic. Let's push forward. But I suppose the uniqueness of this vehicle is essentially the fact that it's Australian. Now, having lived in Seymour for a number of years during my early childhood and uh, into my early teens, it was fascinating to actually see this vehicle in, like, in War Thunder because this is the one of the vehicles that I've actually been inside. Uh, I've been lucky enough to go inside this vehicle. I've been lucky enough to, to, to basically, you know, have a look around the vehicle without it being in its display hall. Back in that day, they had it out in a, in a, a small arena, I guess, uh, with a World War II hall. Uh, I think it might have changed now. I haven't been for a number of years. Actually, I need to do a, 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 a vlog or something, something like that. Go up to that museum in Pakapaniel and, and have a look around again, because I haven't done that in some years. I don't know if it's open due to restrictions, but suffice to say that this tank is incredibly cramped inside. Like, even as a 12-year-old at that point in time when I was allowed to climb in this thing, it wasn't necessarily comfortable back then. Mind you, I was a big 12-year-old too. Uh, that doesn't necessarily matter. Now, the traverse on the turret can only go to those two little points you see sticking up on the radiator because, obviously, you've got this massive hunk and big mortar on the back. You can't necessarily traverse the turret all the way to the rear either. But with the cramped crew quarters and the, and the conditions like that, I guess, well, Australia had no other option. We, we didn't really have many other vehicles. Sure, we tested the Sherman and we tested the the Churchill 
but we had Valentines and we had, you know, Stuarts and so on and so forth, but Australian Army wasn't really itself until, you know, we, we got Leopard main battle tanks. Although Centurions probably we're more known for since we used those in Vietnam. So really the story of the Australian tanks really relates to that of the Matilda here. And I guess this is why you, know, you can still see the Matilda on some of the, the badges they give to certain units and certain elements. So I guess the home of the tank school in Pakapanyal, where they do all the live firing and the training with the M1 Abrams currently, would have probably been the site for the Matildas as well, considering there was a testing range for allied and, and, and I guess, captured units as well. The history of that particular base is very, very fascinating. My granddad worked there for a number of years as head of logistics, and I have lots of stories. When my granddad was retiring from the army, they were just phasing out the Leopard 1s and starting to go towards the M1 Abrams. America was going to give us a heap of Abrams, really cheap, and the Australian government was like, no, we will take the Abrams. And the problem is, a lot of the internal divisions within the army and the army ranks were like, no, we don't actually like the Abrams after doing evaluation and testing. The Australian government was like, nope, that is what you're getting, you don't have a say in the thing. And of course the Commonwealth government being what it is, the Australian government that is, and they were like, nah, you're going to get a bunch of cheap Abrams that America is offering us for discount. Of course they come with their own issues, you know, we have to carry all our spare supplies on the back, which adds extra weight, which then in turn wears down the tracks and so on and so forth. There's a whole bunch of different parts issues. Not only that, the Amron Abrams was overheating. Because it's a turbine engine in the Australian climate, it tends to overheat quite quickly. Because obviously it's an aviation grade engine. So you, you put that in the Australian environment where you're traveling for hundreds of kilometers and doing training in one part of the country one week and then one part in another. It is incredibly expensive to run Abrams. As a result, a lot of our tanks end up in the repair shop, unlike the Leopards, which most of them were operational. But even then, we still have to run with our spare parts. It's a very, very interesting situation. It'd be something that is worth another video. But as you can see here, I managed to take out a P-40. Now, there's another tank down there, but it doesn't necessarily matter. We're repairing at the moment. We're down to crew. And we've got nine seconds to repair. There's a few vehicles running around down there. Come on, there we go. We've got the Panzer 3M. What a sneaky little boy. And I guess this thing has its uses. You know, it retains the same small size and excellent armor of, of the unmodified Matilda. You know, identical gun, same handling. And, and it's a fantastic gun, this little 40 pounder uh, gun. Sorry, say 40 millimeter gun. And the Hedgehog launcher is inaccurate, so it's not exactly the most useful. Um, it retains the same cramped crew positions as the unmodified Matilda 3. Uh, but the launcher against single tire uh, targets, well, it fires its shell using an arcing trajectory and requiring significant leading. And with limited distance, which it should have up to 450 meters, but it doesn't. If it was up to 450 meters, this thing might be a little more usable. But there's no real control. You have to use the hull of the vehicle in order to aim it. There was a case where there was a convoy where they were transporting these things. They put one of these things on the back of a, a destroyer. And the destroyer encountered a submarine, and they decided to use these things as, I guess, an anti-convoy sort of vehicle. They'd mount them off the back, and they'd launch the hedgehogs aft of the ship or whatever. Well, it turns out the gunnery crew didn't really communicate too well with the naval liaison, because this is being army. So the whole idea was a bit useless. It was a great initial concept, but still, Matilda Hedgehog unique in a way but i'm just glad that we have an australian vehicle finally uh to play in war thunder this is one of those vehicles that is unique enough that i definitely recommend picking it up as you can see i'm trying to get into that minimum arcing distance 0 0.015 is not going to be great for the for, for launching these particular hedgehogs as you can see i'm trying to back up to make that distance higher and i just go nah they've just actually killed everybody on the point i might as well just head in there anyway Again, a very novel idea. I don't necessarily use it this match, I don't think. I do actually want to challenge myself to actually try and get a kill on this thing. I did try for three or four hours the other day, and I did try for four hours the next day, so I have heaps of footage of this thing. This wasn't the best match, although it was the most recent one, and I just picked this one and was like, yeah, nah. I, I did have a match where I got ten kills. This one, I think I've got six so far. Maybe seven, I'm not entirely sure. But again, useless vehicle, or useful vehicle, depending on your outlook. It's not exactly the greatest. It's a Matilda with a launcher on the back. It has its own artillery. Very useless artillery. Although, even having a four-man squad, which I did have occasionally, of these things, you still have to have one person that's spotting, because a lot of the time, 
you don't necessarily have the range or at least where the vehicle is supposed to be because you can estimate where everything is going to be but you've only got seven rounds and it takes like a minute and 30 seconds just to reload them when you're sitting on a cap point which is completely and utterly unpractical especially at these lower tiers where everything is incredibly fast i mean there was one match that i had actually where it was we were launching consistent launches at the enemy but this is a single cap on poland and it was a bit different from everything else i suppose and i think that's what it's unique for but i don't necessarily think it's worth getting into the battle pass whether you spend 2000 ge and then do a bunch of tasks for this vehicle or whether you spend 2500 ge and get the vehicle instantly like many of us have i don't think the battle pass is really worth the current money at least at the moment sure you get a heap of war bonds sure you could get a heap of silver lines but aside from the rare vehicles there is no real option for you to i guess just buy the vehicle here right i'd love to see this thing as a proper event vehicle and it is to a certain extent i guess that i'm just waiting for a independent australian tech tree or at least one that has new zealand and canada as well as south africa and uh india as well because those would be fascinating to have i reckon as you can see, I just launched a couple of those mortars. Unfortunately, my mortar is damaged. I've got two of my hedgehogs completely damaged. But that's okay. The game is over. That guy is completely dead. And that is the match. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Because that's basically it. I do apologize for not uploading more content. Although the live streams probably will provide at least a little bit of content for the main channel at least. I have nothing planned for the end of this year there is not really much i did want to get to 30,000 subscribers although it looks unlikely that i'll complete that goal considering that i've killed all the momentum that i had from all of those earlier videos i don't think it should be too much of a problem we had a fantastic match we got seven ground targets three kill assists nine critical hits the battle didn't last too long i expected it to be longer than that but a decent result nonetheless as i'm unlocking my centurion there you go, top of the team and best squad with another guy I didn't really interact too much with. And there's all the rewards there. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, lads. My name is Ash. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that bullshit, and I'll catch you in the next one, alright? Cheerio. Bye-bye.